There are those that have seen the future. They've seen our disasters and our wars. For years, these remote viewers were a part of a military research program, accurately foreseeing the outcome of global events. But when they expected to see a future of prosperity, what they saw was our end. Now, the military officer in charge of this top secret program shatters the silence, revealing to the public what the governments of the world have known all along. The Norwegian government has finished construction of the Doomsday Vault to protect the world's plant species as sort of a modern-day Noah's Ark. More than 100 countries have backed the project. To warn you... Viewers began to pick up on, on a very large event that at first I thought was a nuclear war. To prepare you... To cause the deaths of millions of people. I don't want to believe it. To help you survive. Knowing where to go with your last tank of gas is so important. The Kill Shot. Remote viewers. They could be your neighbors, your co-workers, or someone passing you on the street. They can be anyone, or be anywhere. For over a decade, these people have been predicting everything from terrorist attacks to devastating earthquakes with unprecedented accuracy. But they have a secret. The knowledge of an approaching event called the Kill Shot that will change the world as we know it forever. Just what is remote viewing? And what is this global event that they foresee? It all began over 20 years ago in a top secret government program. In the early 1970s, the public was unaware that the CIA and the United States military launched an aggressive top secret research program to discover if a protocol could be developed that utilized the inherent intuitive abilities of the human mind for the purpose of war. It was a scientific endeavor that utilized some of the most brilliant military contracted physicists and researchers in the world they would exhaust the use of every modern tool and study to determine the secret behind extrasensory perception, or ESP. If this ageless phenomenon truly existed and could be controlled, it would change the face of warfare forever. Major Ed Dames was the training and operations officer for the top secret program. The, the tool, this tool, remote viewing, had its genesis as a military intelligence collection tool. The CIA and the Army, the Navy to a certain extent, and I as an intelligence officer at very high levels of the government, uh, officer, secretary of defense, secretary of the Army level, with all, with all the techniques and methods and tools that we had at our disposal, satellites, agents on the ground, there were just some targets, some programs that were so secret and so classified and so close hold, we could not, they were impenetrable to all these systems. So as a tactic of desperation, the army particularly looked at the potential of psychics and e using ESP to collect intelligence. Secretly utilizing millions of tax dollars, researchers believed they had finally cracked the process to how the human mind obtains and processes unconscious information. Eventually, the positive results of the remote viewing program couldn't be ignored, and real-world targets were issued to the top-secret team. As the training officer for the unit, I had to be sure that my students, trainees, other fellow officers, could remote view anything. For instance, a, a good example would be, at one point there was a, a satellite, one of our satellites, a KH-9, picked up a flash off the coast of South Africa. And none of us in the intelligence community knew what that, really knew what that was. The, there, was there was no method to go back, play the tape backwards, and to analyze what that was. But remote viewers were able to discern exactly what that was and who did that. It was not a natural event. Uh, the results are still classified, so I can't talk about 
about it anymore. But that's 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 an enigma. That was an enigma we had to turn our attention to and penetrate. In fact, throughout these remote viewing operations, Major Ed Dames received three medals of recognition for matters of national security as the head of the remote viewing program. To this day, the details surrounding the recognitions are classified. Up until this point, trained military remote viewers looked strictly at current day targets. But intelligence officials and generals wanted to push the viewers even further, to push their minds into the future. I began to push even forward in time, over the horizon, the future. What it can remote viewing, how effective it, is it against future events? I, I was looking ahead to see if we could put together an outline for our, our bosses of events over the horizon. We were particularly uh, interested in military events, not necessarily uh, civil, uh, social and economic events, particularly military. Viewers began to pick up on, on a very large event that at first I thought was a nuclear war or something uh, geophysically tragic that affected the globe. It took a lot of work, a lot of analysis to collect information about what this huge event was that affects the entire planet too. So we were getting closer to, to, to discerning what we were dealing with. We began looking closer at this. We began to sketch a spherical object that was very big. I thought, oh, maybe this is a comet, certainly not a meteor, because it, it's, it's on fire. And it's the thing that's going to affect this thing, this event that we're picking up in the future. So we did some more work on it. It wasn't a comet. It was big and on fire and right next, right next door in our neck of the woods. It was our own star, the sun. Specifically, viewers foresaw a series of solar flares that are so powerful they penetrated into Earth's atmosphere, destroying global communications and heating up regions of the world to such an extreme that it would cause the deaths of billions. Our star, man's source of life, would now become our greatest enemy. Of course we continued this work about how could we not? Uh, and we were concerned about exactly the, the, the nature of it. How, how survivable, if at all, was it? How many would survive and under what circumstances? Those kinds of things. And especially, how far out in the future were we looking at? Was this 500 years, 50 years, five years, five months? But soon after the discovery of the kill shot event, informational leaks began plaguing the program. The operation became public in the 1990s, and the CIA and U.S. military had no choice but to confirm and declassify its existence. Major Ed Dames followed suit, retiring from military intelligence to pursue civilian remote viewing training and operations. Now that Ed Dames was free to inform the world about the frightening discoveries made during the program, would the world believe it? Would they prepare? Ed Dames wanted to prove that remote viewing worked, that it could accurately peer into the future. It was on the national radio show Coast to Coast AM that he did just that, beginning with a prediction he called the shot across the bow. So uh, many years ago, we looked ahead at, at the kinds of things we would be looking at. One was what I called on, on national radio, sh the shot across the bow, that the sun is going to produce a very large solar flare, a, a discrete burp that will be very large and be, and be a, a red flag toward, geoph toward geophysicists and, and solar physicists. And I went on national radio and I said, get ready, this rampage is, is about to begin. Two weeks later, the largest solar flare in recorded history happened. It was, luckily, it, the sun, that particular event was facing away from the Earth because it was at least an X-35, some people say X-50 or whatever. Point is, it's the solar physicists, the atmospheric physicists, had to create a whole new logarithmic band for what they called a mega flare. They had to create a whole new division for something that they never thought would, that was unprecedented. In a moment, uh, Major Ed Dames will be here. He's a rem remote viewer. I, I know, and I'm sure many of you know, and I'm not going to repeat, but he's a well-credentialed uh, remote viewer who was in the early uh, CIA 
uh, remote viewing program that the government funded for so many years. I've read his entire military record. He is exactly who he says he is. Uh, uh, one of the biggest things he's talked about has been our son and that the sun was going to get uh, unpredictably uh, and horrendously active and would first fire a shot across the bow. This is from thenewscientist.com and the reason I'm going to read this is because a lot of people say, well, you know, Art, the sun has 11-year cycles and there's nothing unusual about what's going on right now. Or are you wrong? Listen carefully. Uh, the headline is, Sun More Active Than For A Millennium. The Sun is more active now than it has been for a millennium. The realization, which comes from a reconstruction of sunspots stretching back 1,150 years, comes just as the Sun has thrown, their word, a tantrum. Over the last week, giant plumes of material burst out from our star's surface and streamed into space, of course causing geomagnetic storms here on Earth, which, uh, in, in fact, one of them so powerful, the most powerful ever recorded, put our instruments in total saturation for 11 minutes. Satellites out there designed to measure these things, they went into saturation, it went up against a peg and just stayed there. It was so powerful. Uh, today, when well, actually a couple of days ago now, when I called him during the uh, intensity of all this, and he said, Art, that was it. That was a shot across the bow. Just two weeks after Major Dame's national radio prediction in 2003, the largest solar flare in recorded history happened. The direction of the flare shot across Earth's path around the sun. If the coronal mass ejection had occurred just three months later, the world as we know it would have changed forever. But this would merely be a warning of things to come, a precursor to the kill shot itself. Major Dames revealed even more near-term events that would precede the kill shot. He informed the world on national radio that a new mutated killer crop fungus would soon be discovered in Africa and devastate food supplies, eventually traveling to other regions of the world over the seas to the United States. As time passed, many had forgotten about this prediction until one day in 2007. When I read this, as I said on the air, Ed, it stopped me cold in my tracks. Spores that begin in Africa spread around the world. That sounds an awful lot like uh, what you said. The spores of which a fungal pathogen would begin in Africa and then migrate. I, I, I can't overemphasize the danger of this particular uh, mutant. We said that it would be a mutation. That is what you said, and it is a mutation. Even more predictions were revealed on national radio. But this next event was more terrifying than many could have imagined. I was, I, was, I was flabbergasted by the data I, I, I got as a result of remote viewing the next X day in Tokyo because this, this reactor problem, re, a reactor breaking, and what I said to the Japanese I said, and on national radio in my country, this is going to be at least a mini Chernobyl, at least a mini Chernobyl. So again, what I said on national radio in my country because the Japanese would not Scare, want to scare their, their citizens with this knowledge was that Japan's going to experience and when they experience this big earthquake, this next big earthquake, Tokyo will be okay, but this reactor problem will cause at least a mini Chernobyl. But the, uh, their greater reactor is going to break, causing a, a, essentially a, another Chernobyl. Uh, and, and is that a double containment type reactor? It is, but it doesn't matter. How big a, an earthquake are you talking about? We're talking about a pretty big earthquake. These, these, these uh, reactors in Japan are designed to take earthquakes up to about 7.8 without even breaking. Right. And so we're talking about a real catastrophic earthquake, a very big shaker that does not do a lot of damage to Tokyo. We know, for instance, that we believe, based upon our work, and have described this for the J Japanese viewing audience, the large modern skyscrapers standing. On March 11, 2011, this tragic prediction came to pass. A massive 8.9 earthquake struck off the coast of Japan, 
resulting in a tsunami that swept across the Japanese landscape, engulfing entire towns. Just as Ed Dames predicted, power plants were damaged, resulting in the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. As the world watched these predictions come to pass, the inevitable question followed. How much time do we have left until the kill shot is upon us? The, the time problem is a big, big bugbear. We can see an event. I used to see uh, loosely. We can perceive big events, all of these types of big events, in the future. Just like one could see a big mountain range in the future. You can see it ahead, but we don't have the parallax in terms of an analogy. We don't have.